All right, you made it to the final step of collage making. That's gluing. So welcome to How to Collage Part 6, gluing and other sticky things. We're going to keep it simple, but we're going to keep it looking real nice. Let's get started. These are the basic things that I think every collage artist should have. If you don't have all of them, it's no big deal. Let's do a quick intro, then we'll get into the deets about each one. First, you want some nice thick background paper. You're going to want acid-free uh, glue sticks. This is my big secret double-sided scotch tape that means both sides are sticky if you didn't know what double-sided means and if you didn't know what tape means and a cell phone you're gonna want some thick paper to collage on top of you're probably thinking wizard what does it have to do with gluing well the thing is you could just glue magazine pages on top of magazine pages, but once the glue dries, it's going to curl. So you decrease your chances of curl uh, and warping if you're gluing on top of a, a nice thick piece of paper. So for example, this is a nice thick piece of Bristol paper. And just pick out the pad that you like um, that you like the size of, right? These are 9 by 12 It's a good size, okay? So this is what's going to stop the gluing, and that's what we're going to mount on, okay? Let's see. So, glue stick. Now, some other collage artists have beef with me about glue stick. Now, everyone knows glue stick is a nice, efficient way to glue things, but a lot of people like rubber cement, okay? And I think the smell on the side of it, people think like, ooh, I'm really an artist now because, you know, I'm like, you know, getting brain damage or whatever. The stuff is sticky chemicals, and I have a collage group on Facebook called Collage Art Revolution. And I have collage artists on there that have been making collages for uh, decades. And they told me, they tell me all the time that the collages that they made with rubber cement a long time ago in the past, now they're not looking good because of discoloration. That's why you want acid-free glue sticks because if it's acid-free, that's supposed to prevent the chemicals in the paper and the chemicals in the glue from interacting with each other and discoloring over long periods of time. So my two favorite brands are Scotch and Uhu. And it doesn't stink, so you're not gonna be in a hurry to finish your collage because you got this like stinky vat of rubber cement. I don't like rubber cement, okay? Double-sided scotch tape is great for, uh, in a way, pinning pieces together so they don't move, so you could glue them together later on. I'll show you, okay? It's going to be a really cool trick. Now, my cell phone, I actually use this to take a picture of my finished composition before I glue. That way, when I take it apart, I could use the picture as a reference so I know how to put it back together because sometimes it could be a little bit scary, right? Okay, let me show you one bonus material here. This is called Artist Tack. This stuff, it's basically, you can't really see it. It's a piece of paper with thousands of sticky tiny uh, little dots on it. And this is really good for um, like mounting things and some other stuff like that. I'll show you in a moment. Rule number one, when you start to glue, you have to have a brief plan. And I plan my gluing based on layers. What's all the way in the back and what's all the way in the front, okay? Now I have to determine what goes in the back, what goes in the front. So looking at it, obviously my furthest back image is this. So I'm pretty much going to be gluing everything on top of this page. I'm going to assemble the eye and the lavender together as one piece. And then that and this red sound wave thing are going to be behind this one big piece of these um, gentlemen carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, so now I have my plan. Now where the cell phone comes in, hello? Thank you for choosing MasterCard, Visa, and 
No, I have people to teach right now. I'm busy. I do not need insurance on my automobile. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a picture, get right above it, and I'm going to snap that, okay? This isn't a very complex collage, but when you have a lot of pieces moving around, it really, really helps that now I could stick this here and use it as a reference as I take this apart. As I glue this together, I'm sure you'll see, you'll sh bleh, bleh. I'm sure you will learn a few things. For example, my first step, I'm gonna glue this eye on this lavender. When I need to glue something really small, I just take the object and I put it on top of my glue stick and I move it around. Very good. Another thing that's good to have is a scrap sheet of paper. So when you do glue a more complicated object, like when I want to glue the edge of this, I don't want to get glue all over my nice cutting board or my collage or anything else. So now I have a nice thick uh, scrap of paper here. So I just got to fill this thing here into this window. So. I'm just, let's see, let's match this up and see what goes on here. Kind of messed it up. I'm going to test to see if I could take it off. Okay, good, I can. Okay, good. It's more or less centered. Now I'm going to carefully with my glue stick, I'm just gonna, I don't know if you ever, anyone's ever pet a snake before, but you never pet, you never really pet an animal against the grain of their hair, or the scales, right? So always kind of want to pet our collage objects very gently with the glue stick. Okay, so now I have one nice big piece to work with. Okay, now let's see. This piece is going to go back here. I want to justify the top like that. That's how I'm going to get there. Make sure I'm centered. Okay. So again, get my scrap sheet out. Let's see what this blue looks like, just so you guys get a frame of reference here. You want to make sure you go all the way to the edge, okay? That's why I love this scrap sheet of paper. Glue over that edge. You don't want those edges curling up, okay? See, you can see that blue. A bit easier to tell what you hit and what you didn't. Line that up. It's got some give to it. I could slide a little bit, only for a couple seconds. It's not centered, but what are you gonna do? Okay, so our next step is to glue this really big object here. Now, you're probably wondering, where does the tape come in? Now, I really like the tape. What I do is I make I take some really small pieces. What this is going to do is I could kind of double up on some things that I want reinforced. Now, we have a pretty complicated object to glue here, so we have to be careful. Okay. Ooh. Should be okay. Just don't want to move anything here. I'm not going to add glue on top of the tape. Again, get those edges. And 
And you don't want to like bang into the side of, of your paper. You'll line it up. S big objects always start down in the middle by pressing and then work your way out. That's how you avoid bubbles. If I feel a little glue on my fingers, I just don't touch the collage with that part of the finger anymore as I, as I put it down. Okay, cool. Now, that's pretty good. I do have some things that are hanging up a little, like sticking up. So what I'm gonna do is come down here, maybe with my smaller glue stick. I'm just gonna gently use my finger to press the glue stick, uh, to press the paper in between the glue stick and my finger. Put it down. Great. Awesome. Now we're gonna put our collage on top of the uh, thick card stock, the Bristol that we talked about earlier. Let's use this studio tack or this artist artist tack stuff. Now this is a little bit more of an advanced technique, but I wanted to show you guys this. Okay. You don't want this stuff laying around. It's like fly paper, okay? Once you're done using it, throw it out immediately. You will absolutely destroy your artwork if it accidentally touches this stuff. Okay. So this is the sticky side. I'm just gonna, don't, don't place this in the middle now because you'll, you know, waste a lot of your studio tacks. Okay, again, I'm gonna press down in the middle. Get that, get those edges. Now, some people use rollers and stuff like that. I probably should, but I don't. Okay, now it's like I got a big sticker. Gotta be careful, man. This stuff really bites. Okay, you don't want that touching anything. Now, I'm going to attempt to center. My collage and a nice piece of paper. Again, press down in the middle, go out, avoid those bubbles. Boom, shake the room as the great Will Smith once said, shout out to Jazzy Jeff. There's a good collage. Look how flat it is, man. That's why people are like, Red Wizard, like, I, did you paint that? Like, I don't get it. I don't see, like, normally when I think of collages, I think of, you know, like, lipstick and L'Oreal ads mixed together with the words, like, crazy girl, you know, on it. This is not a crazy girl collage. This is a crazy wizard collage, okay? Nice and neat. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed my How to Collage series. This is probably the last one for a while, but as I learn new techniques, I'll definitely share them with you. If you need anything for collage making, it would help me and this channel out if you went to uh, redwizardcollage.com and bought supplies from my store. I have collage making supplies and materials, and I'm actually working on a collage kit where I'm gonna package everything you need to make a collage and sending them to your home, a little piece of the Red Wizard for you. So guys, thanks a lot for watching and um, I'll be around.